So the policy implications, we should limit vertical inequality, we should try and eliminate horizontal inequality. And I think it's helpful to think of four different types of policy. Direct and indirect policies. Direct policies are policies in which you take certain groups and target them for certain scholarships, like affirmative action, basically, which you can do in relation to class, income group, race, and so on. And indirect policies are policies which get at the same thing, but you don't actually target groups. So progressive taxation, if you, the poorer group ought to benefit more than the richer group, or, or um, a general increase in health expenditure, for example. There are a whole lot of general policies which have the effect, have strong distributional effects. So those are two types of policy. And as far as the um, direct policies are concerned, they have a lot of advantages because they are very visible. Now, that's an advantage and a disadvantage. They're visible, and therefore, the group affected feels better about them. They're visible, and therefore, the group that suffers gets angry about them. So it depends what the balance of your politics is, is at the time, whether the visibility is an advantage or a disadvantage. And what we've found with our research is that visibility can be a big advantage when you first introduce these policies. For example, affirmative action in the US in response to race riots, it really did solve that particular era of race riots. But over time, the visibility really raises aggression in the opposition, which is what you see today. So it's an advantage in the beginning, but then becomes more of a disadvantage. But it's very direct in achieving its effects. Uh, on the other hand, indirect policies, um, they tend to take much longer to achieve the effects. They're much less direct, clearly. So there are many more leakages if you're worried about horizontal inequality. So you, you, meet, you don't do so well about uh, narrowing the gaps, necessarily. Um, but they may arouse less opposition. Question whether they get enough support to put, be put in in the first place. Another type of policy distinction that I like to make is between pre-distribution and redistribution. Pre-distribution is all those things that you do to a distribution before people actually get that money. And redistribution is once they've got it, you take it away again, or you give them more. So pre-distribution policies are things like raising the minimum wage, introducing a maximum wage, all sorts of things like that. Redistribution is taxation and public expenditure. And again, um, they might have the same effect, but politically they're different. So they're worth thinking about because it might be politically more acceptable, some of the pre-distribution. I think people find it most annoying to get the money and then have it taken away than not getting it in the first place. I think it's worth talking a little bit about the relationship between policies which improve vertical and improve horizontal inequality. It's, it's worth pointing out that you can, you can reduce horizontal inequalities and at the same time worsen vertical inequalities, and clearly you don't want to do that, and that's the design of policies is going to affect that. And usually effective policies to reduce vertical inequalities will also reduce horizontal inequalities. So there's some advantage about that, but as I said, it's rather slow. So essentially, I think you need to look carefully at both sets of policies in order to achieve a reduction of both horizontal and vertical inequalities.